Um, uh, go ahead. I'm going to turn my mic off. So. Well, I, I first wanted to say uh, thanks for um, everybody joining us this morning. Um, and I wanted to. Can everyone? Can everyone hear me? By the way, just a quick yes. All right, cool. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so let's just go go through uh, the. Everyone wants to know the the secret sauce on you know trying to put together winning trades, but what you have to always do is try to put the odds in your favor, and that's what this game is all about. And and I've you know I've been in the business for 22 years, and I've become uh, you know somewhat of a tape reader, and I look at uh, action. A reaction versus action. So that's how I, you know, got into the the position of trying to build different rules for myself. And one of the things that I used to 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 have happen to me was, you know, I, there's this rule I live by is that you can always get into a trade, you can't always get out. And if you live by that, and that's how I learned from when I when I got uh, trades put on my desk from my boss used to say, "All right, you know, I want to see how good you are. Get out of this position." And obviously, it was a you know a significant hole. And so, you know, it's it's how you get out of a trade. You know, everyone can click the buy button or sell button. I mean, it's not you know that's not that hard. It's really putting the odds in your favor to make a winning trade. And so, let's just go through. I, I am not a guy that trades um, in the middle ground. I'm an extreme trader. I like I like highs and I like lows. And to get into the middle ground, that means you've had to have sold it to be able to start covering in the middle ground, or you had to have bought it to get into the middle ground so you can sell it. So I I always want to look at my entries. My exits very closely, so I say on the IM that you know we'll get you pretty close to a high, and we'll get you pretty close to a low. Just give me time, and so the the tachometer that we've developed is, and I want to be very clear about this. You do the exact opposite of what the ticks are telling you. So if you have now in the last two months. Um, the average true range of the S&P has been uh, 75 handles. That's a day. It used to be 30. So now with average true range of 75 handles, you know, it's called a 70, 80 handle day. All these guys are asking, you know, overnight trades. You know, you know. And my point is, is that unless you're a hundred percent confident in your trade. With an average true range of 70 to 80 handles a day, why take the overnight risk? Why why stare at a buzz saw when you're you go in long overnight and you're opening up down 18 handles and you have to work out of that, or that you come in short and you're gapped up 210 handles on the or you know 21 handles on the open? Why why do you have to stare at that 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 buzz saw every morning? So with the average true range, and obviously this volatility that everyone has wanted and and is, uh, you know, at first seven months ago people complained there was no volatility. Now there is significant volatility, and if you don't embrace it, well, that's your fault. Because whether the market's going up or down, go with it, but stay with the volatility. And being a two-sided trader. You know, being able to buy the buy lows and sell highs, that don't sell easy. But there's so many people that have a bias that they want to be short all the time, or they want to be long all the time. Well, stop with the bias. Just trade what you see and not what you think. And that that motto goes pretty deep inside of our IM is is trading what you see and not what you think. I, I've I've classified it as a no think zone. Guys say, "What do you think?" I say, "I don't think." And if if the more the the more you think, the more 
you're going to stop yourself from doing a trade. You think we're going lower? Okay, well, you don't want to get long, so that means, but you don't short it either, so you miss that trade. Well, I think we're going down, and the market goes higher, and you miss that trade. So just stop thinking. Just let the market tell you. You're, the market's stronger than you are, so let the market tell you um, what we're going, where we're going to go. So being from the East Coast, you know, one of the one of the rules is about how do you identify where a rejection levels, where a re rejection on the highs are or a rejection on the lows are. I, I deem something called um, thin chowder. And being from the East Coast, um, no, there's no pictures of me. I'm, 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 I'm behind the curtain. Uh, being from the East Coast, you, you know, guys don't like, guys don't like thin chowder, okay? Um, and so thin chowder would then represent a trade where there is, where it's not liked. Meaning that if we're if we're testing lows, and an example would have been on on Friday um, that 11:33 to 11:35 area, um, that was Thursday's low as well. Um, for a while that we were that was very thin. There was no no one was willing to sell the low. So when thin when there's thin trades happening. That means that the that the rejection of, of having a follow through low is is pretty um, pretty low. So if there's not a new low being created, then that's where the thin chowder would be would come in. Same with on the highs. If we're making new highs, then we go to take another high out, and it's a new high by a tick. Um, then you're going to have thin chowder on the highs. So so you. Now you overlay the the tachometer, and in the last two months, extreme readings are um, you you only saw maybe one or two times uh, a month that you'd see a sixteen hundred tick or a minus sixteen hundred tick. Now they're coming like six or seven a week, and prior to this August, you know. These last two months of having an average true range of you know 70 to 80 handles a day, you don't you you would get ticks coming in a, in, a, in a set of threes. So let me just walk you through a tick. Okay, it's the New York Stock Exchange tick. I have an I have a couple other things that I overlay on that, and I'm not going to give you everything that I trade. I trade, but you come into the room and you'll see it. Um, but so let let let's just say that. That the market's ripping, and we just explode from uh, 11, you know, 1158s to 1174s. Um, as the market rallies, your the tachometer is is reading plus 1200s, plus 1100s. It's coming in machine gun style, plus 1100s, plus 11, the uh, plus 1300s, plus 1400s. You see a plus 1500 tick, you go on a alert. And what I was saying before about it comes in a series of threes. Well, the market peaks now in a, in a, in a series of nines to eleven readings. So you get a positive tick reading of nine to eleven times, and the market now is exhausted on the move. Same with on the downside. You get a, a tick reading of minus um, eleven hundred to thirteen hundred, and it comes in in a series of you know eight to eleven. To 12 times, you know, then the market's ready for a, a rally. And so, you you look at where you are on ticks, where you are on Bollinger bands. Again, I don't trade in the middle, so I'm not I'm not a guy that's going to be you know when we're trading between a you know a three to four handle range. Um, I'm looking for for the market to go one way or another. I'm not going to stay in the middle ground. And and that's because I want to identify where my risk is. So my risk is is in the middle ground. My risk is not in on the lows or near the lows, and my risk is not near the highs or or in the highs. My risk is in the middle. So I identify 
trying to be on tops and bottoms. And I think what if the guys in here um, that are you know from RIM, they can they can tell you that um, you know we're pretty good at uh, at getting the highs and lows every day. And just to give you an example, um, on Thursday, so we're sitting there at the lows and we're trading you know eleven. Uh, you know, 11.34, and so I have uh, another rule that's called the threes, and I'll get into that in a second. But I'm just going to give you an example of Thursday. So on Thursday afternoon, you know, we go down to retest the low. Uh, I said I'm getting ready to to sharpen the buzz saw because you know you can just feel it coming. We try to go press the lows one more time. Um, there, there weren't any willing sellers to sell the low. Goldman goes bid. Uh, the market then starts to have some huge ticks. And I said, if the if the market has ticks the way that we had the machine gun style uh, on the way down, you know, we'd be north back through the 45s to 47s. Well, then all of a sudden, boom, 10 handles, 10 handle rule real quick, and we run to, uh, you know, the high move was 1153s. We literally did 20 handles in like 19 minutes. And that's the type of extreme trading that I'm talking about. So I identify, you know, where, uh, where I'm trying to put an entry in and where I'm trying to get an exit out. And so, a ten handle rule, a ten and a twenty handle rule is uh, ten means uh, ten handles, ten points. Uh, that's a hundred points in the Dow. So if the S and P runs one handle or one point, that means it ran ten po ten points in the Dow. Um, so ten times ten is a hundred, a hundred Dow points. You know, so that uh, ten handles, one point. Uh, that means the spider went from you know 116 to 117. That's 10 handles. Um, so the 10 handle rule is. Uh, well, I, I'm still talking about Thursday. Um, so so when the when the when the market had 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 those lower lows, uh, we had Finch out down on the lows. We had extreme ticks. We had 11 sets of, of extreme ticks on the lows. So now I, I, I've built a book. I've got the Bollinger Bands are off the screen. I've got the ticks lined up. I've got a new low that's uh, not being pressed. So now I say, look, all right. Well, the shorts, I, I can I can build a case to to you know to get a snake out of a wood pile. So here we go. So let's play the game. And so we went long in. And we literally took 20 handles out of the market in you know 19 minutes. I'll give you another example. Friday. So Bollinger Bands are something um, that that you know we look on exits and, and entries. And so there's it, you have to you have to use your your head and and stare at the screen and try to look at and see if you can see it. And I try to tell guys in the room. Take a look, but when Bollinger Bands go off the screen, that means on a minute chart, Bollinger Bands are set at 20 and two. Um, if you can see that the Bollinger Bands go straight off the screen, it's 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 guy, it's all hands on deck because you're looking to, to to put a move on. So Bollinger Bands on Friday, I, I I literally said, guys, take a look. They're straight off the screen. You can't see them. And we're on the 11.29 and three quarters. Okay. We bought, and I said, here, case in point. And, and guys in the room, just a test of the fact that this happened. But um, so they were off the screen. In seven minutes, they went up eight hands. So they're trading 11.37 and a half. So it's how do you set the odds in your favor? This game is not about hope. Or I think it's about staring at the the risk that you know. Let, let's just say you were short the 1140s, and I said the Bollinger Bands are off the screen, 
and they're looking for a move, well, if you're short, you might want to take that cue as a cover. If you're not have a position, you say, I want to scalp these long, that's a great opportunity to do so. I can put an, I can get you to put a short in and a long in using the indicators on both sides. I'm not a biased trader. I'm not looking to short, you know, stay and stay short. I'm not looking to be long and stay long. I'm trying to, to get everyone to do, um, to be on both sides of the tape. And, you know, you can't run, you know, people are so biased. You can't run money for a living, um, being one sided. And that's why hedge funds obviously got created. Because all the guys that run money at Fidelity and Vanguard, they're long only. So they're long biased and they're tired of being long biased so that at the hedge fund business got created so you can short. 568 hedge funds were created this quarter. So think about it that way. You know, you, you need to be on, on, on both sides of the, both, si both sides of the tape. So let me go back to the threes rule for a second. Um, what we found, um, and this is over years of trading it, is that, um, the market, you know, everyone loves to, to, to buy or sell round numbers. So let's just use, um, a case in point. Just use the, the, the 1200, uh, number for the S&P. And so, the market, what we found, always overreaches by three handles. Always. Why? It's because people are stopped on a round number. They want to buy it on a round number on a stop. They want to sell it on a round number on a stop. And by the time those stops are all elected, those stops finally get executed on a seven or a three. So think about the 1200 for a second. By the time the shorts have covered, it prints 1203. You own the 12, let's say you're long the 1210, the, and the market goes into a sell program. It goes 07s, 03s, 1200s, 97. The market goes up in that, that series as well. Bill Blunt is the one that's typing right now. He's, he's, you know, he, he has numbers, Bill and I's numbers match up to, to, to most over the last 20 years. It's, it's, the market has a, the market has a pattern. And that pattern is always the same. So I will never trade an 07. I'll buy an 08 or an 06. But the 07 is a pivot. So, and that means that a 7 is a, a 7 will quickly turn into another number. So, now, picture it this way. Steve, you sound like you're, you know, I, I can't follow you, Steve. All right. Well, if the market is running, let's say the market just went from, uh, 1188s to 1200. It just ran 12 handles. So you want to start now thinking about how do I use the threes in my advantage to put a short on? Because it's, it's always how the market ran. So the market went 88s, 93s, 97s, 1200s, fuck, I'm getting stopped out on a short, 12, 1203, boom. You start looking at 1202 to 1203 to, to, if those threes don't convert the 1203, then the market, that's a perfect place to short the, the market. So you start using that as an, as an example of that the 03 is, is an area because now we've, we've just gone from 1188s to 1203s. The 03 area is a stop place where you put the short on. And now I'll say it on another example. Use Friday as an example. Market's getting toasted, right? The le the uh, high on Friday was 11.48 and a half. No kidding, really? Well, the market had just gone from 11.36s. We had a double bottom there from Thursday, 11.33, uh, 11.34 to 11.35. So we're trading there. I'll just go through Friday. Uh, so we're trading there 11.35, 36. 
Um, we ripped 10 handles uh, and we're sitting there near the highs. We're trading 11.48s. It's like 12.30 in the afternoon Eastern. And the 07, so now think about it. All right, so we go from 07 to 14, uh, uh, you know, 11.40. 11.43, the 07 shows its hand, I don't tra I don't, you don't trade the 07, you trade the 08, what was the high on Friday? Oh, 11.48 and a half, so you trade that 08, so now the market's just ripped from 36 to 48, it's 12 handles. It, so you have to look at the market in a series of patterns, a series of numbers, and always try to, uh, always try to place your odds at a place where no, you know, everyone wants to play a round number, and so my the this the threes rule has kept me out of trades that that I wouldn't have, you know, if I just sat there and guessed. So I have rules. So I have to look at where the market is relative to where we've come from, and that's how the threes rule got developed. So if the market just ripped 16 handles, I'm going to use the, the threes rules to my advantage of putting a short on. If the market's just come down 17 handles, and I'm going to start looking at threes, and and, and I'm, I kid you not, Thursday's low gave us 20 handles between calling out the threes, um, the thin chowder, Bollinger Bands being off the screen, and not a new low being created. You just, I started out talking about you want to put the odds in your favor, you just significantly put the odds in your favor 90% to make a long trade. And that's what this market's all about, is putting the odds in your favor. 50-50 doesn't cut it. Up or down, oh, it may go up, it may go down. I mean, all these people on CNBC, um, uh, it, it's, Mike, the threes rule, uh, yeah, it's on the E-mini, e because that's what we're, that's, that's how the threes got created was off of uh, the S and P's. Um, so when you when you talk about the threes, it's the market will always show you a, that number, and just try it out. Like get your eye get your eye trained um, to start looking that way, because that's you know I'll buy a twelve hundred knowing that. So the buy stops are going to get elected and sell it on the 03 because it's simple. Because it's not, 1200 is not stopping. A round number doesn't stop. It doesn't, you never see the market run to 1200 and not, not go through it. Or you never see the market rally underneath a zero. I mean, a crash through a zero. Just use it, use Friday for an example. What was, what was Friday's low? 11.21 and a half. What did it do when it went to 1300, uh, uh, 11.30? It went 29, 26, 25. It didn't stop on a zero. So the zero, you know, they're they're all they're all pivotal, but you you just need to you know that the market runs in a series of zero, oh three, oh seven, zero. Zero oh three oh seven zero on the up and on the down round number I mean yeah it ends in zero so twelve hundred twelve ten twelve twenty sevens meaning ninety seven oh seven eighty seven oh threes meaning forty three so it's it's just math I mean. It, one thing if you don't do, and I hope you guys can, is keep an, uh, keep a, a, uh, a time in sales of the E-mini on your screen and put it like next to your AIM, AOL, you know, IM box and put it about uh, six inches long by about one inch wide and just put and just have the 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 prints and the contract size going by, because that will get you to see what I'm talking about. Um, in terms of just being, you know, watching the tape. 
Um, I we clear through Goldman, so the uh, the the tick uh, reading is um, uh, NY, NYSE uh, tick dot NYSE T I C K dot NYSE. That's on the that's if you're on Goldman. Um, do only Goldmans produce Bollinger bands that go off the screen? <laughs> Uh, that's a nut, that's a, a little tweaking, um, but uh, no, you can see it, Bill, or you can just hear me tell you. It. But yeah, uh, if oh um, yeah, you can. Uh, no, most programs I think show. You can get Bollinger bands to be off the screen. Um, maybe you're just are you? Maybe it's not set up. You know, twenty and two on a minute chart. What other questions you guys have have for me? Throw throw it out there. I I've talked enough. No, there's no tick for gold. Let, let, let me just describe what ticks do for a second. Ticks are. I, I'm just going to be very blunt about it. Um, when you the ticks are is the amount of stock bought on the offer or sold on the bid. So let me give you an example. Okay, how do you get to a plus twelve hundred or a plus sixteen hundred tick? Um, it's because people say, "Get me." The fuck into this market, and they buy everything that they can, and they say, "Just buy the offer, buy the offer, buy the offer, just buy it, just buy it, see, just buy it." That creates plus thirteen, plus fourteen ticks. People just buying the offer. They're not bidding for anything. They're just paying the offer. Just pay for it. Pay, buy it. I don't care. You know, Fidelity, just cover me. I don't care. Just buy it. Buy it. Buy it. That's plus thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundred ticks. People when they're bidding for stock. Or they're offering stock. You know, you get a plus 400, minus 400. You know, minus 600. You know, it's lazy. When you're trying to get out of the market, and you're just saying sell it, just get me out. Just sell. I don't care. Just well, Steve, no bid for it. No, sell it, please. Just sell it. Get me out. Just, no, sell it right now. I don't care. Just sell, I, please, just sell it. That's minus 1600 ticks. And you get everyone to do that. So you get Tudor, you get you you get Fidelity, you get Putnam, you get Wellington, you get Essex. They're all wanting to sell it on the bid. Just sell, just you know. Of course, bids go away, and you get a huge reading. Well, that extreme selling is what you want to take advantage of, because that extreme selling only happens three four times a day. That extreme buying only happens three four times a day. So, if you like to trade extremes. You're gonna love the IM because we're not, you know, we'll sit there and 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 not have a trade on because we're just waiting, and that's you know that's the whole thing about you know a wise man once told me that you know if if fishing was easy they'd call it catching, you know you you this is all about price discovery. Uh, there's no ticks on Globex. How, how would there be ticks? Because no stocks are open. Again, ticks are a reflection of stocks. Um, it's the amount of people willing to pay the offer or sell the bid. Um, so, Aronson, you, you're you're now you've been on the IM for a couple weeks now. Um, negative ticks, you buy. You sell positive ticks. Uh, I went through the threes uh, rule uh, like the last ten minutes. Yeah, I mean, you, 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 uh, with the de depending on the trend, right? So, like, like I just said, is like if you, if the market's rallying, um, the, if the market's rallying. 
people ask me about, you know, is it time to short it? Well, you've got to really wait for the market to tell you that, you know, if you're if you go to short the first two twelve hundred tick readings this last two months, you're nuts. Because by the time the ticks roll by, that there's going to be eight to eleven readings of it. So by the time those eleven readings hit, there's going to be seven or eight handles that are going to go right in between your forehead before the the, the ticks are over. So if you know that coming in, that the first couple sets of of tick readings, um, it's it's it, you you just sit sit on your hands and wait till they're numb until the ticks show themselves. I'll give you an example. Thursday, we're trading 1151s, okay? 1151s, the first set of ticks come in, negative 1100, negative 1050, we trade 1148s, okay? More ticks come in, minus 1300, minus 1200, minus 1100, minus 1400, minus 1200. By the time those ticks were done, we're trading 1142 and a half. So, had you started your full lot position on the first root set of ticks, ten handles went straight in your forehead. So, if the negative ticks, obviously, your sign is selling. So then we went into a ten handle rule, then we traded a, you know, the lows, the lows on, um, the lows on, 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 um, on Thursday were uh, forty. Uh, well, yeah, 43s. So um, you you wanted to see that the, the 43, you know, the, you needed the ticks to go in your favor. And then the market will then counter trend. Yeah, Mike, it, totally. You, you, you could, you'll see the ticks. I, I shout them out all day. And people ask for them. And, you know, when they're not produced, um, you know, you just wait, and so that you know, you got to picture this like golf, okay? You got 14 clubs in your bag. You got to stop showing up to the tee box with the driver. You don't know what the day is going to look like, so that's why you have so many clubs in your bag. You don't know what the day looks like on the market, so put your driver down and wait. And and that's you know. You, you know, some days you need a lob wedge. You know, some days you you you, you know you're killing it. But then there's other days that you're just chipping around because that's what the market's doing. So stop using, you know, your big Bertha. You know, when you're at the pitch and putt. You know, it's not going to help you. You know, it's and and we're not here. You know, we're not here to to help you. You know, trade larger, trade smaller. We're we're here trying to to help you recognize that there are trade setups and when to take advantage of them and when to put the odds in your favor of ninety percent that you know that you that the trade's going to work. You know, if if we honestly, there's guys in our room that are making. Last week, um, we had a new guy. Um, his name began with an R. That's all I can tell you. But he he started with twenty thousand um, two weeks ago, and he's made sixty seven thousand bucks. And he never had traded the way we traded, and and he would have never put those trades on. And he's very vocal about you know I just did what yeah you know, I stopped thinking about what what I all the bad things I used to do, and you know he's traded very successfully. We have another trader that that's been with us for three months. And he's up two hundred and ten thousand dollars, and he doesn't. Ha he's not a position trader. He's not an overnight trader. He's just trading every day with a flat P and L every morning. He's up two hundred and ten thousand dollars. Yes, two hundred and ten thousand dollars. He started with ten. Oh, we got a comic. No, he started with ten. Yeah. All right, shoot me, shoot me some more questions. 
Um, do I use the audio tip that our friend Jamie Jamie built? Uh, I, I I have it. I mean, I you know it's open. Yeah. But see, you know, um, yeah. But let me. I'll say this. Okay. Do I do I use the the audio? Yes. But if I if I if I gave you a tick, what would you do with it? And so that's my point. Is like, okay, this thing's telling you something. So, do you, are you going to do it on the second one? Do you know the actual reading? So it's I I have to I have to see it with my own eyes. I can't you know I can't be told in my ear. Um, but the you know we're, we are going to be building something um, that you know that I think you're going to start to see you know ticks on a on a minute by minute basis. Um, can I kindly explain what? Hold on. Oh, the the sounds um, birds are. <laughs> Birds are chirping that those are plus ticks. Um, uh, the thing that sounds like a buzz zapper is um, cell programs, and gongs are negative ticks. No, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the thinkorswim platform. We're, I'm not here to talk about different positions either. I mean, if uh, if you followed our short position on silver from 52, you, I, had, I had a friend of mine retire with a million six on the call. So I'm uh, we've been negative on silver. If you follow our charts and and gold, we've been negative on gold. Uh, my my answer would tell you to to sign up for a free week of our trial, and you'll get uh, you'll get all the tick readings, and you can make you can you can you know put it against all your charts and all your indicators, and you tell me if it helps you. Um, Is chowder volume slower pace or is it no that is totally something that is that I've developed that um, you know again I could you imagine if uh, if someone wanted to give you away all your secrets no it's a it's a prop um, uh, it's a it's a recipe. <laughs> To try to identify where the market is going to stall. So whether it's on the highs or the lows, chowder gets created on both sides. And when I say like chowder stirring, it means that you know this you can start to see. So you start to put all your rules, all your indicators, to where where we are in terms of the numbers. And you just join the room for a free week, and and you tell me. What you think? Let me just jump in real quick. You, if, if you guys trade E-minis every day, and this is what you want to do with your trading, um, and I will also say, you know, that the room is not necessarily limited to E-minis. We've got uh, some great option traders in there. 
Uh, there are guys who incorporate options into the calls that we make in the room. Uh, if you're going to do this every day, uh, try it out for a week. It is no risk. We've had a bunch of new people come in in the last couple of weeks, and you know they, um, you know they won't go anywhere else. Uh, and they're they're thrilled. So I mean, give it a shot. I mean, you've got nothing to lose. And it's a collaboration of traders that that use different things, and when all their stuff comes together. Um, you know, it works really well. Give it a try. You know, it's uh, seven days. Come on in. Anybody else with questions? Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Uh, let me just quickly let, let, let me thank uh, Ray uh, and, and Ninja Trader for uh, for having this today. Uh, I've got so we've got the ninja we've got we've got the top step offer. I've got a link there for my new service. If you guys want to come and check that out, uh, that's there. Uh, any questions? Feel free to email me. Um, and we're on Twitter, you know, at Mr. Top Step. I'm on Twitter at Princeton Trader, so pretty easy to remember. Uh, so you know, um, come on in, check out the website, and. Um, you know, thanks a ton, Ray. Uh, it's uh, been a great experience. Yeah, thanks, guys, for everybody that that joined us this morning. And you know, you know, keep uh, Mr. Top Step on your uh, on your favorites list because um, you know we're constantly putting you know charts up. Mike V does all his pivots every morning. Um, eventually, you know, all this stuff is not going to be free, so you might want to be part of the family before. Um, you know, as we go into a, a a paying type of profile, but again, um, you know, we appreciate everyone here. Um, you know, keep keep an eye on the Mr. Top Step site because, you know, whether you're in you know metals, treasuries, you know equities, um, there's always something there for you. So I appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Danny. And uh, Ray, are you there? You want to take over? Um, I treat the multiples about every six to nine months, and I've been back testing them, and I'm getting ready to tweak them again based upon the increased volatility in the market. I think we can make them even more accurate. I think I can make them better. I'm always trying to make. You know, I'm always trying to. You know, I don't want to. If it isn't broken, I don't want to fix it. But at the same time, um, we can always be better. So these get tweaked every six to nine months, and they're about to get tweaked again for the fourth quarter. So if you're thinking about subscribing, if you're thinking about coming in, we're going to upgrade the, uh, the volatility levels. And you know, I go back over the, the two sides of them, the ones I'm using now and the ones I'm going to be using uh, for the next six months, and the new ones are better. Um, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're a little more accurate, and they, and they give us nice little kisses uh, up and down a little bit better, so uh, that's for you know. So even the guys in the chat, you guys can look forward to that. That's coming um, now. So we look at we look at the day, and what do we see here? I see an upper volatility level at 28.75, 11.28.75, and a daily pivot sitting just above here at 11.30.16. That's within two handles. So that's that that to me, we're going to call that um, a zone. Yes, Grant. Uh, two things. This is being recorded, and my understanding is uh, we're going to be uh, there's a PDF of this that that we're going to be giving out to everybody. So no worries, uh, you can get a PDF of this. Um, so as this approaches the upper volatility level and daily pivot, my thinking absolutely is not to buy. I'm not looking to buy because the buying is happening. I'm looking to bait it. Um, and uh, uh, Bill Blunt, one of the guys in the room, has a great term, first passes or fades. That's his term. I give, I got to give credit for where credit is due. It's absolutely true. The first time up, invariably, it's going to fade. It may only fade for a handle. It may fade for five, but it's going to fade. It's going to fade, and you need to be there. So. As we come up to the upper volatility level, you see this long candle. 
And I don't have it up here, but I will tell you at the same time, the ticks start going over a thousand. And UV will explain that later. So we're coming into a level, the ticks are high, um, we're going to get short. So the most important question is, um, I lost my thing here. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. Um, just yell, hey Mike, you lost your slide. Um, so we're still here. We're up, we're up in this area, and we fail at the upper ball. So I'm short here. Where, where is my stop? Where's my stop? It is just above the daily pivot. And that ended up being a two, a two handle stop. Um, so I know that I'm wrong if we break out above the daily pivot. So my risk is contained. I'm short. And we're going to see how it goes. Um, so down, down we go. Coming into, uh, um, the opening range low. Uh, short near 1145. Okay, yes. Um, I've got the right slide. So we're coming down into the opening range low. And you've got to respect the opening range when you're trading these things. And my trading philosophy is I will take a short. I'll have my two handle stop. When I get two handles into a trade on the upside, my stop goes even and I take a third off immediately. Okay? I'm profitable and my risk is out of the trade. I'm looking for the short because the market was unable to get over the upper volatility level and additionally unable to get through the daily pivot. But my initial key is the upper ball level here. It couldn't do it. So that gets me in. Um, so if I get positive in a trade, I get a third of it out. Uh, and I get my stop to even. And then I roll down a as we go. My biggest sin in trading is I get out too early. I turn larger winners into smaller winners because I just exit too early. My, my thought is I would rather have a lot more smaller profitable trades than waiting for that one home run trade. And that is just from my newbie trading time where I would turn winners into losers invariably. So I've got that. You have to know yourself as a trader and that's exactly where my brain is coming from in that regard. So I will pull it off. Um, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so you've got to respect this opening low here. 11, 13.75. We couldn't take it out. We make a higher low. Now this says cover and reverse long for a second run at the volatility level and daily pivot. Um, you can absolutely reverse long. There are days when I do and there's days when I don't. And honestly, it's just if, if I feel like scalping on that particular day. Um, in this particular case, I did cover and go long. And the main reason I did is because while first passes or fades, the second time up, if it's going to run, it tends to be able to do it. So I want to be long that. And I've got an exit point here. The stop should be below the opening range low. Because at that point, if you're long, you're wrong. You break that opening range low, then we're going to start talking about the lower ball level and 110.25. Okay? So again, your risk is limited. It's all about limiting risk. I mean, if you're going to hang around for a long time. I've talked to, you know, one of the things I like to do is talk to guys that have traded for 10, 20, you know, 30 years and ask them how they do it. And they all invariably say that the number one thing um, that goes on in their mind when they take a trade is what's my risk and where am I wrong? So I really try to model my trading after that. Uh, you know, the, if you trade well, the money's going to come. But the most important thing is not to let a big loss erase all of those, uh, all those good trades because uh, that, that will absolutely happen. And it's going to happen anyway, but to the extent you can keep it in the forefront of your mind, uh, you'll be better off for it. So we get long here, 
you head back up into the ball level. Now, so we're back. Um, and it's still not acting very well. What you would like to see is another big strong candle here on the five. You're not getting it. You're getting a doji. Um, and uh, the ticks were acting up again. Not huge tick numbers, but I think they were at least 900 going into 1,000. So that gets my uh, that gets my antenna up. That you know it's time to take some more off. Uh, so we go up here and we fail at the daily pivot. So first time around, we fail at the upper ball level here. Second time around, we fail at the daily pivot. So the zone is working. Um, we had good ticks, um, like I say over here, a copy candle, and I'm short again with a stop above the daily pivot. Your stop on this trade can be even tighter than the stop on the, on, on the last short because the daily pivot, the edge of that zone is holding up. So we're mitigating risk, we're short again. So, we're short the second failure at the daily pivot. And I wanted to put this trade in to show a couple of things. Number one, respect the opening range. And, you know, that a lot of times with volatility levels, we're trading for three, four, five handle winners. Okay? We'll get our big winners, and I've got a couple examples of that uh, later. But we get this big old five minute candle down to the opening range high. Okay? That tells you that, 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 that you're right to get short that daily pivot, but to be careful. Um, why? Because you're still shorting an uptrend. And what I mean by that is this. Here we are at 8 in the morning. Here we go. And we're shorting that. Okay? Um, so be careful. Because you're going against the grain. Um, stop still above the pivot and our risk is limited. Now, I switched to a minute chart here. Uh, so be careful. What we had here was a move down to test the opening range high. Go back here. Make sure I've got my time frame. Okay. We came down to here. And this ended up being a one handle scalp. And I, I'm putting this in because sometimes when you trade, that's life. It ends up being a one and one and a half handle trade. You didn't lose money. Uh, but it wasn't this glorious winner. Not every trade is, um, you know, a 20 handle winner. So, um, and we head back up uh, once again, and this time we take out the daily pivot and we take out the upper volatility level and we make One second. I want to get the hold on, guys. I want to get I want to get the laser pointer back. Okay, I got my laser pointer back. You guys see the pointer? Okay. Um, this time we get above the upper volatility level here, and we make what's called a bias. Okay. Um, and that. Um, is uh, the best way I can describe it is if it gets over if it gets over the volatility level for a particular period of time, uh, it starts to, to to be a bias for for the day, um, and it does that here. So we have a bias, but we don't get long. And this is where I get back to everything coming together in the room. And I hope I'm not being too confusing, but. What I want to show you here is how the room kept me from losing on a long trade. 
when we come back to test this level here, I get long. Okay? Because we're testing the upper volatility level, we get long on the bounce. We get up here, and we get this very long candle. And at the same time, UV starts talking about the ticks are here, the ticks are here. And when and the ticks get high, UV spot gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And if UV spot starts getting big, you better, you know, you better look out because if if you're going uh, in, in that direction, it's time to reverse. So we're up here at 11.34 and the ticks are getting big. So even though my system tells me that the volatility level gets me long, the ticks are telling me that it's time to go. So we do. Uh, that's where the power of the ion comes into play with the ticks. So that, that's what I mean by that. And the other thing I've learned from the IM, and this has taken some time for me because I really could never get used to the fact of, um, yeah, I was on the Europe close. Good point. Uh, that the uh, the getting out of a long could also be getting into a short. It's taken me a long time to get into that, but you know, Yubi says if, if you're if you're if you'll sell it, why wouldn't you short it? So that's what we did there, and we rode that down through the daily pivot, through the upper ball, down to the opening range high, it ended up being a nice little trade for us. Okay, um, And I point, it's not the cleanest trade in the world. I have some very clean trades to show you, but I think it's a real trade. And what I mean by that is, it's how the day really goes. You know, you grab a couple handles, you, you, you get stopped out, you're up for a handle and a half, you use what, what all the resources in the room, and you walk away with a nice little short at 11.34 down to the opening range high. Because, you know, the, the, the top step I am is a collaborative effort. Uh, and it's a, it's a fantastic team. And I think that this trade really demonstrates where the team uh, came into play. Okay, stretch pivots. We talked about those. Okay, vol level to vol level. And this is invariably what will happen. You will get trades that go perfectly from, you know, they'll perfectly touch the ball level and move. And that's great. And I have some examples of that that I'll show you later. But basically what will happen in real life is that it will come down and get close. which is what it did here. We established our opening range and we went down to test the lower volatility level. And when I and I use that term in in the room a lot and I'll say it's going to test the uh, the lower vol level, you know, 11975. And I'm seeing here down here guys it says upper, it should be lower. And that says lower and it should be upper. So just ignore that. This is our lower vol. This is our upper ball. I apologize. That's my fault. Um, so we test it, and we bounce. And if you could zoom in a little closer, you'll see on the on the second one minute candle, we fail to take out the low of this one minute candle. So we make a little higher low here, and that would be my signal to get long. Where's my stop? Below the lower ball level. Two handle stop. Your trade's controlled. You can even make that below this candle. So. It's um, the, it's a very risk limited trade, and we make that move. So I talk about here the eighty percent rule, um, and that's kind of how I try to trade my day every day. I'll take eighty percent of any trade, any move, whether it's five handles, twenty handles, fifty handles. Sometimes I'll get the bottom ten percent of a move. Sometimes I'll get the top ten percent of a move. That to me is gravy. You can get the meat of that move and you can do it consistently using the levels uh, and you can maintain you know, low risk uh, and do that. Uh, it's a good way to think of, of, of day trading. You know, try to catch 80% of a move. If you can do that you know, three or four times a day, I mean, you have to ask yourself, what would, uh, yeah, exactly, Robert. Uh, it, what what would um, 
you know, five, six, ten, twelve handles a day, consistent handles a day, do for your P and L, and you know, it just builds on itself. Um, now, so we're low here. Our risk is controlled, and you know, honestly, you know, we take some off as we go, and there's bumps in the road, um, but your goal. In, do, in, in looking, you know, from the volatility level perspective, your goal, once you break back into this opening range, your goal is to go back up to the upper vol level. And, you know, I've already told you guys my biggest, my biggest crutch as a trader is to get out of things too early. I didn't catch all of this. But there are guys in the room uh, that, that do. And it, it, it thrills me when you know, I'll get pinged on the side and they'll say, thanks, you know, that was, you know, a 10, 20 handle winner for me. I mean, that just makes my day, uh, you know, even more than anything that, that I'm doing in my account. Um, so we get up here, up to the, uh, up to the upper ball, 1136.25, and we get another long candle here. Another long candle. Picks her high again. And, you know, uh, and it tells you that uh, it's time to go. And, you know, we go from 11.36, we go from 11.21 to 11.36, so 15 handles. If you get 12 out of those 15 handles, that's 80% of the move. Um, you can't ask for much, I mean, you can't, you can't ask for much more than that out, out of a trade. No trade is going to be perfect. You will bottom tick trades. You'll top tick trades. It's kind of like getting a hole in one in golf. I mean, you'll you'll remember that day, you know, for the for the rest of your trading life. Uh, but if you concentrate on getting eighty percent, um, uh, if you concentrate on getting eighty percent, your consistency will improve. Your risk management will improve, and you'll see an immediate uh, boost in your P and L. And what's most important is you'll see a boost in your P&L that's sustainable versus a P&L that's chopping around, you know, like the VIX on a rough day. You want your P&L to look like, you know, you know, a really boring chart of, of General Mills, you know, just kind of going from the lower left to the upper right and, and just kind of cruising along. And being able to mitigate risk and focusing on that can do that. Um, Um, Karen, my, my initial stop would have been two handles below the upper ball. Um, if I, once I get up here, once I get two handles into it, then I'm an even, and I'm taking a third off on the breakthrough of the opening range low. Okay? So I've still got two thirds on at that point. And what I will typically do is trail my stop up a couple handles at a time. It really is a trade by trade thing for me. I don't set mental, I don't set mental stops because, um, my lawyer brain will get in the way and I will try to tell myself why, why I'm right and I will write it into a loser. Okay? Know, again, know yourself. Um, uh, so I, I will trail it up a couple handles at a time and capture as much of the move, uh, of the move as, I, as I possibly can. Personally, me, I got stopped out right in here. I didn't catch this last one. I got stopped out right here. Um, okay. Let's, where are we here? Oh, we're already at noon. Okay, let's do a couple things. Let's look, now you want a classic bearish breakdown where a vol level works perfectly. Nothing works perfectly, but the perfect vol level trade for me is when you break a level, you break a level, and you make a bias, which we did here. This is a gold chart. You break a level here at 1683 and change. The move then comes up to retest that level, okay? Am I getting short here when we make a bias? No, this goes back to my, we're down 60 handles, am I gonna sell it here and hope that it just kinda goes down? And there's that hope word, no. Um, 
what I want to have happen. And, I, and I'll be the first one to tell you, I have missed trades doing this. I've missed them. I have. Just because I don't, I'm, I'm really particular about selling weakness and buying strength. Um, uh, I want the retest of the level, and I want the second fail. That's the trade I want. There's guys that trade with me every day that hit me on the side uh, that, that, that catch a little more of those trades, and, I, and I'm getting better about getting into those trades more. But I really want the retest of the level. Why? Because it mitigates my risk. When we retest here at 1683.20, uh, 1683 rather, I'm short here. I'm short, and it gives me a chance to get into a low risk trade on gold. Trading gold is like grabbing on to the hood of a car that is going 90 miles an hour on the freeway, hanging on for dear life, and then trying to jump off while landing on your feet. That, to me, in my mind, is trading gold. Okay? Um, and if there's a way I can do that, if there's a way I can do that and limit my risk, I'm there every time. Because you can get huge moves in gold. But you've got to limit your risk, or you're just going to be another one of these guys that just get blown out in gold on 50 bucks the other way. Don't want that. If I short here, uh, and that is about 1670, my stop is up here at 1685 above the upper vol level. That's 15 bucks in gold. I mean, that'll you know that that'll adjust your day you know pretty quickly. So I want the fail here at the lower vol. I'm sure here, I can lean on it, I'm confident in it. Once I get a few bucks in the money, I'm even. My risk is out of the trade, and we're going down. Um, and we ended up catching this for, uh, for about 50 or 60 bucks. It was a great trade for us, um, and it went really well. But you want that breakdown, retest, and a move down. And you know, we, we, uh, you know, we focus on these every day in the room. Let's uh, now. I've got another one here, uh, which is a breakdown, you know, through the pivot. This is an ES trade. Uh, now, and there's a lot on this chart, and I wanted a lot on this chart because it's basically what we look at every day. You've got all of the. Uh, I'm sorry, Ken. Let me go back. You're right. Let me draw a line on that. I'm a lousy drawer, but I'm going to do it anyway. So, you get the retest here, and then you're down here, and you ride it again. And we caught 80% of that move. It was a big trade for us. Okay, let's go here. I'll go back to the pointer. Um, I would draw lines, but I think the last thing this chart needs right now is more lines. Um, so this is what we look at during the course of the day. We've got uh, we got our ball levels. There's our opening range, and we've got pivot clusters below here. Uh, you got the 20, the daily, the nine, and the three day, and they're all within 10 handles of each other. But what I'm especially uh, concerned with is where the 20 and the daily pivot are within a handle. And they're so tight, I don't even think when we were producing the charts we could get that, that number in there. So I'm looking at that level, and it's very close to the lower ball. So you've got a support zone or resistance zone that needs to hold. And it runs from uh, 1160, uh, 6225 down to 1158.17. Okay? So we open up. We establish our low, we break it here, okay, and I am going to draw now. I promised myself I wouldn't do that. We break lower ball here. We make a bearish bias in here. So what are we looking for at this point? Retest. I want to retest. And I get it. Right here. It's not that perfect one candle retest and fail. But sometimes when you get a retest once, twice, you can be even more confident that it's going to hold. So I was short here. Um, 
it was a tight stop. Uh, I think it was a two-handle stop, uh, just above the opening range low. Because if we get back into the opening range, you get back up in here, you're wrong. Okay? But again, volatility levels let you limit risk, give you a level to lean on, and you can start to incorporate it uh, uh, with with regard to the uh, uh, with regard to your risk management and trying to catch as much of the move as you can. So we get a retest, we fail. Okay, it comes back up to the outside edge of our pivot support zone, and this is where you see the pivots and the ball levels uh, uh, work together because you can't just get married to one line. Uh, you know, they don't, the, the e mini doesn't work in lines. I mean, they're constantly trying to take out everybody's stops all day long. They know where the stops are and, and, they're, and they're hunting for you every time. Um, so we get a move back up here to the daily pivot, 20 day pivot, to the edge of that level, and we fail. And, and we move lower during the course of the afternoon, and it was a, it was a 25 handle trade for us. So, we get a lot of one handle, two handle, three handle deals, but I like to say that I think the best way uh, to describe the ball levels, and I think the people that trade with them every day will agree, between the E-mini, gold, and oil, they will give you one outstanding opportunity a day uh, with regard to a fail or a fade or a kiss. Uh, uh, that, that, that runs for, for multiple handles. And using that in conjunction with picks and handle rule, etc., uh, uh, you know, can make a real difference in your trading. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, we're at 10 after 12. Uh, I'm going to open it up to questions. Um, I know Danny's not on, uh, so I'll go ahead and sell this sucker. Um, uh, and, you know, I've been trying, to, I, I've been trying to, to, to explain, you know, during the course of my presentation. Uh, the top step I am, if you do this every day, um, is Yubi's mic on, Danny? Is Yubi mic in? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Hey, Mike, nice job. Uh, go ahead. I'm going to turn my mic off. So I'm um, all right, no, no, you. Well, I, I first wanted to say uh, thanks for 